Can you hear from the mic, right? Huh? You can hear me? Uh, can hear so, okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the PHP meetup. Thanks for coming down, and I hopefully, hopefully that you came down just for my talk, right? <coughs> uh, so I'll be giving a meetup talk on the lessons I've learned from building some APIs using PHP. And a bit about myself, I'm a PHP developer, uh, and I have a GitHub thing here. It's like a social thing for developers, I think. And uh, I do have some contributions to uh, some PHP stuff. You can see that I'm a bit active in PHP and uh, Angular stuff. Yeah, so, and this is me in San Francisco by the Golden Gate Bridge wearing the same shirt right here. <laughs> and I've not washed it for three years, I think. No, I'm just kidding, I, I, I wash it, right. I'm not that, I'm not like the people, yeah, that don't wash their clothes. So let me just go through the style of this presentation. It's kind of a casual one. Uh, first, I'll go through an example, a story of how I built an API and stuff like that. And then, uh, then I'll go through some of the problems I've identified for this particular API that I helped to build. Then thirdly, I'll go through the solution that I came up with that may or may not be correct. So it depends on how you view it. So a long time ago, a very, very long time ago, you know, sometimes when you look back at your code like five years ago, you're like, oh God, did I really write that garbage there? And this is like kind of like a moment down here when I looked at some of the stuff that I've written very long ago. So this is my first horrible API. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite bad, I think. But it does its job. So I contributed to this, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce the word. Yeah, so it's a server, it's, it's like a PHP script which you store your the list of servers that you have onto a, into a SQLite database. Right, so basically I contributed this part down here, which allows you to grab some information from, uh, yeah, just allows you to get some information. <laughs> yeah, it just returns you some data. So how you, how you make the API request is you send it through uh, to this URL, for example, down here. Then you do a get request to index.php, then with a parameter, type equals JSON. Okay, it's, it's actually quite bad, I think. And then results, you get a ID of a one, then some name, then some location and CPU. Yeah, very simple API, uh, very not very useful and stuff like that. So let me, let me just go through some of the three amazing problems that I can find with this beautiful design. So the first problem I, I've identified is that it has uh, unknown resources. The second problem is that there's an unclear retrieval method. The third problem is that it's not sufficiently useful. So let, what do I mean by unknown resources is that there's, there's a swarm of pox. So in the Richardson maturity model, swarm of pox is the base, is level zero of uh, the RESTful API. So it, it's quite bad. So let me just see how I can rectify this issue. Let's go through the problems it have first. So of course, before we rectify, we have to identify the issues, right? So let's look at the code here that to send requests. Uh, so let's see, what's the endpoint? It's index.php. What am I trying to do? Get some information, what's the expected output? Some JSON data with a list of server information, right? And then, so here I, I've identified the resource because initially we don't know what is the resource. Uh, because no way here you can tell whether what the resource is. It doesn't say that you are retrieving a server here. There's, there's no way, absolutely no way you can tell that you are receiving, retrieving a list of servers. And we first identified that the resource that we are trying to obtain is servers. Then uh, how can, uh, what are the issues that with this, with this design here is that it has a very confusing endpoint. It's just in index.php. So you just send, a, you send all your requests to index.php. You don't know whether it's a server, it could be something else. So 
one of the ways to resolve this is to have a routing system, like in frameworks and stuff, they do have that, to route your request and then give it a bit nice looking. Uh, unknown action, secondly, uh, we need to identify what's the action required to retrieve the server information. And of course, the resource output is also unknown, right? Uh, then, of course, identify the resource output. Then, so now I've made a few changes to how you can request it. You uh, do a get. Instead of index.php, now we have the routing system in place. So you, you, you make a request to slash servers instead. So you, in, uh, you can do a, a Apache rewrite to route the request all back to index.php. And it looks like this servers down here, and then it looks nice. And then, yeah. So from here, you can see that, OK, at least now I know I'm retrieving a list of servers. Uh, yeah, then what am I trying to do? Get a list of server down here. You can see that it's actually a get using HTTP verbs here. Then what's the expected output? A list of servers, right? So another problem here is that it's, uh, it has, it's very unclear as to how you're going to retrieve the data. Because sometimes, if you don't pass in the type equals to JSON, you're going to get HTML output, which is something that you don't want at all. <laughs> right? So let's look at a request. So what's the expected format? Right? JSON, right? We expected JSON. And some, but if I don't pass in the type, it'll give me HTML. Then what, what do you get? get? Either JSON or HTML. And do I need HTML? HTML, HTML as the uh, as a API consumer. No, you don't know. Uh, you don't need in this scenario. So, uh, how we can see the problems are here is that one of it is like the expectations don't meet reality. Like if I'm if you are using this API, you and you didn't pass in type, you just get HTML output. It's something very unexpected. You wouldn't want it at all. So we need to identify some expectations of the users, and uh, yeah, before we make certain assumptions. Then, of course, we need to. The second problem is that it's unnecessary to, to have HTML output. So we should separate the front end from the API endpoint. And now we have a very clear cut uh, way to retrieve our server information. So instead of uh, doing the question mark e type equals JSON. <laughs> now there's a better way. You make the request to API the whatever side it is. Then on the base side, you still get your front end, which is your HTML. So this separates the concern between the API and the front end, and then you get a very clear way of retrieving your your list of servers, right? So JSON, and you only get JSON, right? And you get JSON without passing in type. So the third problem that I've identified is that it's not very useful. It's uh, very useless because you have limited actions. And the data you get back is also quite less. So what we can do to expand these uh, actions available to us is that we, again, look at the problems here. What can you do? Retrieve list of server domain purpose. Allow users to monitor their servers, right? So you get a list of server, and that's really it. You can't really, really monitor it, but there's a way to do that later on, which we'll see. Uh, can you do anything other than retrieve a list of server? No, you can't, because it's useless. Right, then, so we've identified this limited actions. We can do things like, hey, maybe we add read single resource. So instead of just having an entire list, we can have like you know just specific one server, and maybe we can Add in web sockets, right? So it's like so cool, right? Let's throw in some web sockets. And thirdly, maybe we need to make it not just read only, right? Maybe let them write some data to this API endpoint. So now that it's now that we have rectified this, now we have added, let's just imagine that I've added it into the <laughs> server. Uh, now you're making a hit again, API the this side. But now you can retrieve a single user data, so maybe followed by their ID, server slash ID. Very simple, right? Then to create a server, you can just do a post to servers and then pass in the JSON data here, full equals bar. <laughs> and to monitor your response from the uh, WebSocket, maybe we have a separate endpoint here. 
So, uh, and then you start receiving, you start, start subscribing to this uh, WebSocket endpoint. So now you can do reading of single resource, writing new resources, and monitoring servers through WebSockets, which is a lot better now, right? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. I don't know. OK, so Michael responded, yes. So uh, next attempt of making my API. So now it's a new story now. We have a, our past lesson learned from this horrible mistake, horrible API there. Hopefully, I don't repeat it in this second API. So I, I had an internship project at ASTAR where we made this uh, chatbot. <laughs> and it's a, here's a cute diagram of how it works. So the user messages the Facebook Messenger, and then the chatbot is down there, like, hey, hey. And then it uses NLPs to inter interpret some data. And then, like, yeah, the only part that uses PHP here is the API server. The chatbot uses Node.js. <laughs> Right, so like you just uh, book the appointments like that, uh, la 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 la. Wow, so natural, so so AI, right? So smart. Then to use this API, we make a request to API slash version one. Notice that in this new API that we have here, it has glorious versioning of APIs, right? That means I can deprecate APIs with whenever I want. Right, and then come up with version 3, just like how Google does it all the time. So uh, you can retrieve a list of users, just uh, do a get to users endpoint, because there's really a routing system in place in Laravel framework. And uh, models, there's this thing called eloquent models. People also know it as entity models, entity or whatever it is. Right, so uh, in this case, we use all these uh, eloquent models as a representation of our resources, in, which is user. Then you can create users, right? Do a post to users, JSON, and then you get some data back, all right? So results, you get back a, a success equals true, which is kind of a bit uh, useless <laughs> because you probably wouldn't be needing it. But later on, I'll explain why we wouldn't need this success equals true, right? Then you have a list of users down here. It's an array. With uh, with just some users down here, you can you can see that it's a user, it's a resource of user because there's this word down here that says users, right? So there's a few issues with this design here I have as well, is that firstly it's it has a very informal structure, secondly there's a lack of data relationship, third there's no embedding and linking of data, so the first thing I want to talk about is how the structure is informal, and I don't really like it. It's very weak and informal. And how we can rectify this is let's analyze what we have here. So you have success. So how do you transverse through the users list? Anyone knows? Anyone can make a guess how you're going to transverse through the users list? Raise of hands, no. Yeah, probably you can do that. Uh, so you loop through response, angular, no, square bracket users, right? So this is all good, right? Like, it's very intuitive. You look at it, yeah, you retrieve through users, right? So how do you know the key is users, right? Because maybe because we are requesting to the user's endpoint, right? So yeah, is this suspicion? No, because uh, you need to know the structure that I have, which means that it's informal. Not everyone knows that I have this structure. Another person might have another, another structure and all of that. So it's not a very formal way of communicating the design of the response here. So there's a better approach that we can do is that instead of uh, transversing through the users, because not every time you're going to get users, right? Let's say I get messages. Do I transverse through messages this time? So uh, handling the data would be a bit of trouble. So now I instead of... Uh, putting in the users down there, I put it data. So now you just have to transverse through data, right? It's always data. Then how do you know what is the type of resource you're going to get back? It's true here. Type, it says here, literally it says down there type users. Yeah, and is this suspicion? It's better, but it's still not the best, 
right? So we aim to be the best of the best of the rest, right? Of the rest, haha, -ha, rest, right? Okay. So lack of a data relationship we have here. That's a second problem. So we don't have the relationship presented within the data just now we saw. So let's look at the issue that we have here. So you get this structure, but how do you know like you have certain relationship, right? So of course, users would have a relationship with another user, or maybe they have a relationship with messages and, and stuff like that, right? So how do you assess a user's message, for example? So request, you make a request to users slash one slash messengers. But how is this self-explanatory? Like, you can't tell at all. Like, like there's no way you're going to tell. No, so can this be improved? Yes, we can. We can present the relationship data without too much information. So let's do it. Now we have a success, messages, type, data, and then relationships. And then relationships is an array that says here type messages, then the reference to this user slash one slash messengers. A lot better now, isn't it? You can, you literally can see, yes, this user has messengers. Very self-explanatory now, right? And, but can this be improved? Well, it seems good. It seems a lot better now than the initial design that we have. And now, the third problem that I'm facing is that there's no embedding and linking of data, right? So uh, it's not self-explanatory enough. How do you go to the messengers? How do you go to users and stuff like that? Then let's look at this piece of data and analyze it again. Where do you go next for users that have an ID of two? You, you can't tell, right? So if let's say I want to go to users that's ID of two, this is a relationship that is outside and then it only just say one, right? So can more relationship data be presented? Of course. Is there pagination? No. So you can't, uh, not a big problem is that without embedding and linking of data from, uh, from one page to another, you can't do pagination at all, right? There's, it's like, okay, how do you know this is the maximum number of users we have? Right, so, so we can solve that very easily by embedding, uh, the relationship it and the links from first page to second page and all that stuff. So let's take a look here. Now we have a lot more metadata here. So these are metadata that's very useful to us. Like for example, page, first page, last page, and account. URL, the current URL, the next page, which we can transverse to, a uh, list of data. And then now you notice that the data is an uh, it's an array that contains all your resources. And inside each resource, you have attributes and relationships. Isn't it a lot better now? It's so beautiful. Like, you look at it, you're like, oh man, I'm going to marry this structure already. Like, we're going to get engaged tomorrow and then host a wedding or something. Yeah. So I envision a future where you can uh, marry a robot, but this time uh, you can marry an API. Yes, maybe next time you have like you just make a post request to this marriage endpoint and you get married, <laughs> right? So where do you go next uh, for users that are ID two? It's very self-explanatory here. You can see, uh, you can re observe their relationships here. You see, each resource has their own individual relationship, and then can more relationship data be presented? It's already been presented here. We present uh, added in count, which lets you know how many messages this user has. At a glance of view, you don't, you really, you re get to see a lot of things about these users already. And is that pagination? Yes, you can do pagination using all this data that we have, right? Very useful API, I love it, you love it, yeah. So the question now is uh, what makes an API design great, right? So I believe that you know, just take a look at this picture down here. It's some furniture and some trees and some chairs and stuff. And you know, basically, these furniture are the dead version of the trees outside. Anyway, so my point is that when you take a look at this picture, it looks beautiful. Or at least to me, I think it looks beautiful. It looks great. Like it's a house that you want to live in, but it looks expensive as well. 
Anyway, of course, there, there is a cost to great API design. And of course, nothing comes for free, right? And when you look at the API design, when it looks great like that, you know it's great. It's really simple, right? So tools that can make your house or your API become as beautiful as that, right? Is, uh, firstly, I think frameworks help a lot in building APIs. Although you can also don't use API, uh, you can also don't use uh, frameworks and still build a great API. Like for example, I'm I'm in love with a uh, Laravel. Um, Symfony is pretty great too. I mean, Laravel builds on top of Symfony, and Zen does have its own benefits as well. Of course, there's Cake PHP, Code Igniter, and a lot of other stuff. Because what's so great about these frameworks is that it helps with do a lot of things that you have really done, like uh, routing. Firstly, your routing and stuff is really done for you in frameworks. And uh, entity and models are represented using your user data, database, and all that stuff already. So that's a lot of scaffolding for you already. Then the second thing that can help you is uh, specification. So there's this specification called JSON API. You can literally go to this site called JSONAPI.org. And it's a specification for building APIs in JSON. Right? There's other specifications as well, such as Hail, which is a hypertext application language, I think. Something like that. Sorry. So yeah, these are specifications that, uh, that can help you organize your structure. So this is one way which helps make your API very formal. Right? If, let's say, you look at an API, and then they tell, and it's, the structure tells you that this is JSON API. You straight away know how to do the querying. You know how to get do the posting and everything, right? So a specification is one way to help to formalize the way you communicate your APIs. I, I did give a talk on it previously. Then of course, uh, turn. Let me show you a quick demo of what I've done. So I have this. Uh, let me run this thing. Down. Oh wait, this is not okay. So uh, wait. So let me just serve up this uh, A API. So I have this uh, API. I have this server running behind in the scene. So uh, it's a very basic s application here, uh, API. So we can do like uh, very simple things like logging in, retrieving of users. Retrieving of uh, campaigns as well. So uh, right now I'm, I can log in as a as a admin user. I'm logging in as an admin user. So right here, uh, right now, uh, you can see that I'm doing a request, a post request to JSON Web Tokens to this uh, resource endpoint called JSON Web Tokens. Then I'm creating a JSON Web Token for myself. Right, so uh, as you can see, it passed me back a uh, 201 created. So making use of uh, your status codes, you no longer need to use things like success equals true. Right, you, you can make full use of your status code already. So from 400 to 500 status code, you know that there's a problem, and then it, it's suddenly going to return you some form of error. Right, so down here, it returns me a data type JSON wipe tokens. Then the ID is my, uh, it's the ID I'm, I'm going to log in with. So it returns some other useful data as well that I wanted to return. It's all defined within the schema that I have. So let me just uh, get uh, users. So now I, I can retrieve a list of users without login. I, I'm, I didn't pass in the JSON web tokens, but you can see when I log in, uh, I can retrieve type users, all this, uh, yeah, all this information. So all this information are included by default in the schema. You can, all, of course, modify and uh, also request additional data to be included in the schema according to the parameters. And uh, what's so great about this is that if you want included data, so although you have the, the relationship here, it's just relationship. But if, let's say, you want the whole resource like this, these are called uh, included resources. 
that has a relationship with the user. Right, you can see it has a relationship with this user down here. That's why it's displayed down here, and I've included it as default. So one thing you'll notice is that uh, you, can't, uh, you can't see their email addresses, and that's where authorization takes place, right? Authentication and authorization. So now I log in as a, I try logging in as an admin and displaying the data. This time, I'll be able to get their, their email addresses. See, now I can start spamming them with emails, like sign it up for like spam mail and then email them every day and annoying them about how beautiful my API design is. Then another thing is that I can, uh, I have these other endpoints, which is called uh, campaigns, I think. So you try to get it, uh, you can't. Wait, did I type something wrong? All right, I think it's companies, is it? No, let, let me just check what, what did I do here. Look at this horrible code I have down here. So campaigns, yeah, it's campaigns. So, yeah, so I, I send a request to uh, campaigns. You see, it tries to get a campaign, and then it's going to return me with an error code. Where's my status code? I can't see anything. Where's the status? Am I? Where do you all see it? I can't see. Oh, yeah, 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 I missed it. Yeah, so it says here 401 unauthorized because I'm not logged in. Right? So this is the authorization part. So it says, yeah, yada, yada. And then you can see the error that's passing it, passed back to me, 401 unauthenticated. So I know that, yes, I need to log in to be able to view this uh, campaign. So let me just log in by passing in my token. Very simple, right? So intuitive, so smart. I'm a genius. I compliment myself all the time. Right, so you have all this uh, included data. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so you can see all this included data, campaigns and stuff. So this is a very simple example of uh, me making use of JSON design and stuff like that. And let me just go back to the slides. So this is a very simple view of what, the, what an API usually includes the routing, authentication, authorization, and then you finally reach your, your controller down there, which returns your result in a very formal way, informative, and you can in request for details that you want and details that you don't want. Right? You don't have to request for everything, yeah, unless you put it in a default. Right? So some of the lessons I've, uh, we can learn from this talk is that uh, expecting written documentation is bad because not everyone's going to read through the documentation before they read their API, before they start using the API. So only doing get is useless. Yes, it's useless. So read-only APIs are basically not very useful. For my first story, you can tell. And not presenting relationship causes confusion because you don't know if the users has messengers, you don't know where to go next and everything else. So the good thing that we should take away from is that formal and consistent structures are very good and it's suitable for a lot of use cases and in this case I've shown that it's suitable for mine, right? So especially in consistency, if your API is not consistent throughout the whole place, it's going to be hell of a problem, right? Because nobody's going to know how you're going to communicate with this API. And of course, usefulness is important. You need to drive it towards domain design and What's the point of uh, having just a read-only API? And embedding relationships uh, makes things more self-explanatory, like shown in my third example. So of course, there's some non-technical lessons we can learn from. It's good to make mistakes, because when you make mistakes, you gain some experience, and you get to laugh at something, like yourself. Look in the mirror every day, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you know. So. Another thing we should do is uh, gear towards domain. Uh, we should design our API according to what the domain requirements are and everything, and not just design blindly because APIs can be badly designed. And of course, give a talk about it, right? Be because what's the point of doing all this and then not sharing it? Uh, nobody is going to learn from it other than yourself, I guess. So that's the end of my talk, and I thank you. If you all have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. <laughs>